Station Supine Station. In this station, we are going to teach you how to properly immobilize a potential cervical spine or a head injury to a long backboard. For this station, you will have a long board, a cervical collar, a head block set, and four nine foot straps. To begin, I'm going to start by directing my partner, first of all, scene safety BSI. I'm going to direct my partner to take cervical spine immobilization. My partner comes in, places her hands on either side of the patient's head. This way it prevents the head from being moved around. I'm going to assess my upper and lower CSMs by asking the patient to give me his wrists. We're going to check the CSMs, pulses. Can you feel my touch? What am I touching? Can you wiggle your fingers? Next, I'm going to come down and get my lower CSMs. We'll check pulses. Can you feel my touch? What am I touching? And can you wiggle your, your toes? All right, at this point, we're going to prepare, uh, apply the surgical collar. Starting by measuring the collar. Without leaning over the patient excessively and not moving the head, slide the collar underneath the patient. Centering the collar on the midline by the collar, double check it for tightness. Now if the collar is applied, we're going to prepare our backboard by placing the base for the head blocks onto the board. Feed the strap through the hole at the top of the board with the velcro facing outwards. Wrap the strap through the, the ring, bring it around on the back side, feed it through the hole to secure your velcro down. Taking the remaining two straps, wrap them around the board from the back side, bring it between the rings, secure it down to the velcro. Now that we have our straps and our head block uh, base in place, we will place the board down beside the patient. Can you please lift your arms? And approximate the position where we want the board to be in relevance to the patient's body. Please note that to move the patient onto a long board, you can use a technique as a block, which requires a minimum of three providers. One person at the head and two people on the axis line of the body. To properly do the block, you could place one hand on this under the patient's shoulder and another hand just down around the hips. A second rescuer would place himself beside me, placing his hand under my arm, taking my pelvis, cross the leg, and grab underneath around the uh, mid shank. The head person's count. We roll the patient towards us, slide the board underneath the patient, move the patient back onto the board, and then position them. The technique used to position the patient is called long axis drive. So now that we have John on the backboard, uh, we're going to turn ourselves, uh, position up towards the patient's head, and perform the long axis drive using at least two people. One grabs just underneath the armpits, the other one will grab just below John's legs. And the partner's count, we slide the patient down in a diagonal fashion and then bring it back up to whatever side uh, it's needed for the patient to be centered on the backboard. Once the patient is centered, it's time to put the straps on. Please remember not to walk over, step over, or lean over your patient unless it's absolutely necessary to do so. Taking and unclipping and unfurling your hand strap, Come up, taking the female buckle, slide it underneath the board, bring it up through the handhold, drawing it through your hands so that you prevent the strap from twisting. Clip the buckle, shorten the strap, and just drape it across your patient's uh, torso.
you must secure the patient's body with the four straps and there's an appropriate place for each strap. So you're going to come just above or on the nipple line, just at the pelvis, in between the hip and the knees. Careful not to put your strap on top of over the patella. And then one just below the patella, in between the patella and the feet. Always secure your straps from top to bottom. Do one side first and walk around to the other side. Using the handhold, the same handhold on this side as on the opposite side, unclip your buckle, take your female end, feed it down from the side of the body, down through the handhold to the underside of the board, and then feed the buckle out towards you. Keep the buckle approximately three inches away from the edge of the board. Shorten down your strap to the buckle. Position your strap where you want it to be. Slide your fingers between the two straps. Pinch, pull the strap gently towards you so you have some tension on this end. And adjust your strap. You want the, the strap to be approximately tight enough to get two fingers underneath snugly. If it is too tight, the patient will have his breathing restricted. If it is too loose, it will not properly secure your patient. So as you can see, I have the ability to put my two fingers underneath with relative ease, but it is snug. Make sure your strap is not interfering with your collar. Take your excess and just tuck it underneath just to get it out of the way so you don't trip on it. Keep in mind that your buckles, especially the buckle at the top, needs to be off to the side of the body. If it's in the center line, it will impede with your ability to be able to form chest compressions if you need it to. Again, Reminding you that each one of these straps is being tightened to the point where I can slip two fingers underneath snugly. If you have padding, say a blanket roll, you can put padding between the patient's legs to make it more comfortable for the patient. This strap, bring it up on top the buckle on top of the shin so that when you tighten down the buckle it doesn't pull the buckle up onto the shin causing discomfort to your patient. When I adjust the, uh, the strap you'll see that it will pull the buckle off of the shin and bring it right into the center which is more comfortable to the patient. Again checking my placement and also checking tension. Notice I check the tension here not in the center. I check the tension against the body. So before I go and get ready to secure the head, I'm going to recheck all my straps, readjust them as needed. And now I'm ready to secure the head. To secure the head, I'm going to grab my head blocks, flat edge against the patient. Patient will burn away. Thank you. Place this edge just on the top edge of the shoulder at an angle, very gently slide it in against the head. Partner pulls her hand out to allow the, the um, block to come into place and then replaces uh, her hand by holding on to the uh, block. While you're on this side of your patient, 
Take your head straps with the Velcro facing towards you. Grab the bottom, grab the ring, feed it down from the top towards the bottom or towards the ground. Fold the Velcro over and just drape it across your patient. Walking around my patient, move your straps out of your way. Same procedure, flat edge against the patient, slide it in, partner takes hold. Now, you can either bring the straps straight across like so and secure them down, or if you wanna get a more secure uh, method of, of stabilizing the head, take the straps, cross them, Try to keep the strap that's going to go underneath the chin on the outer side of the cross. Using the same hole or same ring as on that side, take this strap, feed the Velcro down from the top through the D-ring. Position it just above the eyebrows. Hold your thumb against the the, with the strap underneath it against the pad and just secure it down so it is snug and can't slide. Bring this one across, use the same ring as on that side, same procedure, secure it down until it's snug. At this point, I'm going to do my final CSM checks, so pulses, can you feel my touch, what am I touching, and can you wiggle your fingers. Pulses, can you feel my touch, what am I touching. And can you wiggle your toes? This concludes the tutorial video on spinal mobilization supine.